Hello, welcome to the video on number operations. This will be a lesson on this topic, and let's go to take a look at our objectives. And uh, basically four things I want to communicate here in this lesson. Uh, the first is we want to understand the four basic number operations. Okay, I think you'll find this to be pretty easy. And for most of you, probably a lot of this will be review. And uh, the next thing I want to talk about is grouping symbols and how we use them in numeric expressions. And then um, I like to talk about powers and exponents. And this is a big topic. Uh, we'll study this in much greater detail later on. But uh, for now, I just want to give you an introduction and, and, like I said, probably a review for most of you about powers and exponents. And then we'll also talk about absolute value and how to um, evaluate an absolute value expression. All right, so let's go ahead and get going here. So help, these numbers need an operation. So, you know, I always try to be a little humorous. I'm an easygoing type of person. <laughs> try to have fun with math, you know, make the most of it. And I know everyone out there loves math, so uh, hopefully I got a little chuckle out of you. But anyways, this word, number operations, I mean, this uh, word operation in of itself is kind of scary, right? You, you think, oh boy, an operation, what are we doing here with these numbers? It's really quite easy. A number operation is what we can do with two numbers. So, for example, if I gave you 2 and 7, I said, hey, let's perform an operation with these numbers, what I'm, what I'm asking you or what we're talking about is what can we do with them? Well, we can kind of combine them together by adding them, all right? You could probably even, like, subtract them. And you could probably think of a couple other things we could do with them. We could multiply them, and we could even divide them, all right? Side of group and symbols. Just remember, you got to work from the inside out. All right, and last but not least, the fraction bar. Um, kind of think of that as a separation kind of like maybe like the 50-yard line on a football field, it separates the numerator and denominator into like two groups. So for example, if I had this, all right, let's say I had this particular fraction. Well, what we're doing is we're separating the numerator and denominator from each other. And we're kind of indicating, hey, you know, go ahead and do all the work you need to do in the numerator, and then do all the work you need to do in the denominator. Then we'll kind of put together the final result in a fraction. So 2 times 4, of course, is 8. 10 divided by 2 is 5. There we go. Okay, so that is our, our fraction. So these are grouping symbols. All right, we're going to see a lot of them. And now let's move on. Make your life easier with powers and exponents. Of course, all of us are looking to make our life easier. Some of you, uh, you know, are really looking to make your life easier, especially with math. So listen, I mean, um, heck, if we can make our life easier, let's do it. And one of the powerful way we can make our life easier in mathematics is using powers and exponents. Really, really is a um, powerful notation. Now, as I said in the beginning of the lesson, we're going to really uh, spend a lot of time learning about powers and exponents in detail in the proper button. I want a negative number here. Uh, on most calculators, don't use the subtraction operator, okay? That's not it. You'll have like a little plus or minus thing, so you might want to look for it. Okay, then you hit 2. So I have an open parenthesis, negative 2, close parenthesis. Then I'm going to go hit my power key, hit 2 again, and hit equal, and you should get 4. All right? So remember, your, your calculator is a tool. All right? it, uh, it count, it's really counted on you to you know, program it correctly. So take a little time, make sure you're familiar with your calculator. And, um, and once again, I really want to emphasize these are where students make common mistakes when they start manipulating power. Hello, welcome to the video on number operations. This is our second example set, example set B. And of course, I uh, hope that you watch the lesson video first. It's always important that you start there. And uh, what we're going to be doing is going over our second uh, set of practice problems, okay, or example set B problems. And the question states, or the assignment is, evaluate the expression. And all that means is to 
basically do the work, you know, get it down to one value, these uh, numeric expressions. And we're going to start doing that here in one second. I want to emphasize two critical things, though, um, as we get going uh, in, in mathematics. We're working on math together. And those two things are, uh, one, you be neat, okay? Uh, I know for myself, when I was young, I was uh, very uh, at poor writing, and <laughs> hopefully you find my writing to be pretty neat now. But that, but that was um, a conscious effort on my part to improve. So um, if you kind of have some, you know, chicken scratch, you know, for lack of a better word, don't, listen, you can change, and you should change, especially with math, okay? So try to really work on your writing uh, the best you can. Uh, so neatness definitely does count. The second thing is you want to show your steps, show your work, okay, be complete. Um, I'll give you basically two or three different reasons why you want to do that. One, it's going to help you understand and reinforce what we learned, okay, the step-by-step -step, uh, process, you know, it's just going to, it's going to help your retention of the material. The second thing is if you make a mistake, you can go back and kind of read what you did and figure out where you went wrong. All right, so it's going to make um, you know, correcting a particular problem much easier. And the last reason is if you're in a, a class where you're getting a grade and you're taking a test or whatever, Kate, that we want to do this part of the problem first. So we have 12 minus 4 times 1, which of course is just going to be 12 minus 4 plus 6. Notice how I'm not kind of writing only uh, a partial part of the problem. I'm just kind of rewriting everything step by step. And 12 minus 4 is 8. Now, because I know 12 minus 4, the result of doing that is 8, I'm going to just uh, drop the brackets there. Okay, I'm not going to do this, all right, because that's kind of redundant. You only have the brackets indicate to do what to do the nu numeric operations inside of the grouping symbol. So no reason to have that. All right, so at this point, 8 plus 6, we can go ahead and just write as 14. Okay, moving on. So we have two uh, pairs. Hello, welcome to the video on the order of operations. This will be a lesson on this topic. And I basically have two objectives for this lesson. And the first is I really want you to understand why we need to learn the order of operations. Okay, and I think that's essential for learning to take place. So There's got to be a reason why we're learning this. Um, let me go ahead and I'm going to give you two reasons. But one, right off the bat, is the following. I've seen countless students make so many errors in mathematics, and it was because of their lack of, of following the order of operations that created these errors. Okay, this seems to be a common trend um, that uh, we can help you know, correct right now. So right, right here and now, if you commit to learning the order of operations, trust me, it could save you a lot of, uh, a lot of errors later on. Okay, so that's one reason. I'm going to give you another here in a second. But... My other objective, of course, is to teach you the order of operations and the correct way to apply them. So let's take a look at a, a problem that I hope will uh, clearly illustrate why we need the order of operations. Now, it's the same problem, it's just two different versions of it. So let's suppose um, I'm a math student, but all I know so far is how to multiply, divide, add, and subtract. And somebody said, hey, go ahead and do this problem for me. 16 divided by 4 plus 4. I said, okay, how am I going to do this? So 16 divided by 4, uh, that's 4. So now I have 4 plus 4, and that's 8. So maybe that's one approach I could have take, taken. And I did everything right. I did the division right, and I did the addition right. However, if I didn't know any better, I could have went over here and said, okay, 16 divided by 4 plus 4. I'm going to add these two 4s together here. And now I have 16 divided by 8, and that is 2. All right, so now I have two answers for the same problem. So one of these has one of these answers is right, the other is wrong. So which one is it? Okay, chances are most of you probably are fairly familiar with the. Hello, welcome to the video on the order of operations. This is our fourth example set, example set D. And of course, I hope you had a chance to watch that lesson video and um, do some practice in the other videos that we've been, because um, 
equations and start working on this problem. So the first thing is parentheses, right? So this is the set of parentheses I need to work on. I need to do what's inside of that set of parentheses first. So if you haven't had a chance to try this problem on, you, on your own, I really would like it if you tried it now with me. Okay, so what do I have to do inside of this set of parentheses? Okay, well, I have to go back and refer to PEMDAS. I have to do the powers first. So this is going to be... Hello, welcome to the video on solving multi-step equations. This is our fifth example set, example set E. And what we have is a little word problem here that's going to involve an equation. So let me go ahead and read it. It says, on a vacation you are told the outside temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So given the conversion formula below, determine how warm it is outside in Celsius. So we're given it's 75 degrees outside, so what we're going to want to know is how warm it is in Celsius. So it's a pretty straightforward problem. So let's go ahead and plug in our given information. So the outside temperature in Fahrenheit is 75. Okay, so this is going to be 9 fifths C plus 32. All right, so what we have to do here is solve for C. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides of the equation. All right, so we've got minus 32, minus 32. And then we got 75 minus 32 is going to be equal to 43. So we got 43 equals 9 fifths times C. So now we're down to a basic one-step equation. So to solve for C, what I have to do is take this 9 fifths and flip it. Okay, so I can get rid of the 9 fifths, so I just have C. So that's going to be 5 ninths. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 5 ninths. Just like that. So C is going to be equal to 5 ninths times 43 over 1. So let's go ahead and get our calculator out. 43 times 5 is going to be 215. So I'm going to do this here. So just kind of slow it down. So 5 times 43 is going to be 215. And that's going to be over. 9 times 1. Okay, I'm just multiplying these two fractions. That's 9. So 215 divided by 9 is going to be approximately... Hello, welcome to the video on compound interest. And I always enjoy teaching this particular topic because it's the compound interest form. You have $1,060. So you can see here that it's a much better deal to go to a bank and invest. Now, some simple... Um, vocabulary. 